Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is the very last day of Hermes uh, training activities. Today we have another uh, distinguished uh, guest from uh, United States of America. His name is uh, Joe Lankart. He is one of the pro professionals studying uh, Turkic uh, region, especially. Uh, we are going to follow his presentation today. Uh, First of all, before starting your presentation, I would like to thank you for joining us today, Joe. Uh, microphone is your, you can start your presentation. Thank you very much, uh, everybody. Uh, merhaba, uh, and I am very delighted to be here. Uh, and I wanna thank Director uh, Jimin for uh, inviting me and coordinating uh, these training sessions. Um, before I get started, uh, this is going to be a conversation. Uh, and so I have a Google Jamboard uh, ready uh, so that uh, you can comment uh, throughout this uh, presentation. Uh, and then towards the end, hopefully we can look at the Jamboard together to see what uh, how, what are some of the sources and tools that you like? Uh, because I think it can't be a lecture, but I, I hope you will be uh, willing to share uh, uh, some of your favorite sources and tools. So uh, let me uh, quickly show you uh, what I've done with the Jamboard so that you could uh, be part of the conversation. So here is the Google Jamboard that I have. And um, so pretty much two, two columns here. What sources do you use? Uh, favorite search tools. And in order to comment, all you have to do is click on the sticky note and then type in uh, your response. Let's say Google Scholar, if you like. And then you add. Uh, and then once it's added right here, here is the comment that I just posted. So feel free to comment and I'm gonna give you the link to the Google Jamboard uh, so that you will have it. Just a second here and I'm gonna stop sharing. And here is the link to Google Jamboard. Feel free to comment throughout this uh, presentation. All right, I'm gonna get started with my presentation now. Uh, do you need any Turkish translation about the uh, uh, Jamboard, Joe? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, okay. I think, yep. Mm -hmm. It's pretty straightforward, I think, but I could be wrong. All right, so here we go. All right, everyone. Uh, my presentation is today is about uh, sources and search tools. Uh, obviously, uh, when it comes to sources and search tools, uh, the diversity uh, is overwhelming, uh, whether it is uh, in, in Turkey or other parts of the world, um, sources in different languages uh, uh, and different search tools for different purposes, uh, the diversity is sometimes overwhelming. So uh, the sources that I'm going to highlight here is by no means comprehensive, but just to give you an idea of, of what I'm talking about and what you've gone through yourself. So uh, uh, I just wanted to mention that because um, uh, you know, uh, I wish we could convey the full diversity of sources, uh, right? So here we go. All right, so whenever we're talking about sources, search tools, um, it really comes down to the topic that we, we've selected to research. Uh, whether you are, you are a librarian or a student or a faculty member, um, it really comes down to the topic. And, and from there, we build on the topic and, and we need sources to build, am I correct? Uh, and so, you know, why do we select certain topics? It could be uh, a real life relevance, personal interest, or it could be something that you develop on your own in consultation with your faculty advisors or your fellow uh, students, for example. So. So it, it really builds on this. And so a topic raises a lot of questions. And in order to address these questions, we need sources. But we are also asking as we are researching a topic, 
couple of questions. And I just typed up some questions for you, which is the, the real question we are trying to get at with, with, with the topics is who else has worked on this? Whether it is in, uh, let's say, uh, you know, at your institution or in your country or around the world. Um, so when it comes to uh, topics and research projects, we are really, our scope has widened uh, to, to, to an international uh, uh, scale or international scope. Uh, and, and that really opens up the many possibilities because, because a topic can be researched. Uh, and, and what our goal when we're researching a topic is to incorporate all the discussions as much as possible in different languages into your research project. Why do we do this? Because we want uh, to do a very thorough job, but also we want to include different perspectives from different parts of the world into our research project. It makes it uh, complete, it makes it full, and more importantly, it makes your research project uh, richer. Uh, at least that's my opinion anyway. Um, let's go to uh, the next slide here. But we're also trying to figure out um, whenever we have a topic or, or a research project, we also need, uh, we need some direction uh, in order to figure out what sources we can consult. And one of the sources for sure are institutions that have been researching specific subject matter. For example, let's say uh, uh, the uh, Institute of Turkish History, for example, they have spent decades and decades uh, researching Turkish history. So naturally, if you are really interested in a project, one of the, one of the sources definitely uh, we should ask is, um, what institutions are out there uh, that have, uh, that have uh, researched my subject matter? It could be a department, it could be a university, it could be a museum, it could be a public library. So uh, again, the variety of uh, 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 institutional sources is, is really amazing for uh, uh, research projects. Uh, and, and why do we even do research, right? Because research is supposed to be fun. Whether you're a librarian or a student, it should be fun. Uh, if research is not fun, then that's not good. Uh, let's go to the next one. Then you find out one of the sources uh, for your project is, let's say, if you're interested in volcanoes, for example. Well, here is, here is a, a source in the form of an institution uh, that is entirely focused on volcano uh, observatory. Uh, you know, so you, know, you could find some information specifically about volcanoes, let's say, in Hawaii. Uh, and, and so when, when we're thinking about sources, let's not restrict sources to let's say specifically print materials or digital materials, but let's widen the scope to include uh, institutions as well. So that's the first thing. Let's not uh, 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 research in isolation, but instead let's use all the possibilities uh, to, to, to build uh, 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 on a research project. Okay. And because of the diversity of sources out there, we also need to think about non-traditional sources, right? Uh, and, and in this case, we really need to include, let's say, podcasts, for example. They, they could be potential uh, sources for building uh, uh, your uh, portfolio uh, on, on a specific project. So there are different ways to pull in information uh, and podcasts are becoming uh, uh, very relevant, especially if you're new to a topic or new to a subject matter that you're researching. And again, podcasts are universal. So, you know, podcasts in uh, Turkey or uh, Germany and other parts of the world could be incorporated as you're beginning to explore a specific project. Let's go to the next one. And it is continued to, uh, uh, to include podcasts of, um, from institutions, even departments, uh, so, so that you could get academic perspectives 
uh, uh, on specific subject matters. And, and so I'm, I'm highlighting a couple of those possibilities here because your own university might be uh, publishing podcasts and videos on specific uh, 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 topics, and they could potentially uh, be a starting source for you. Let me go to the next. Okay. Then we also have another uh, uh, type of source that that we need to consider, which is which are reviews. Uh, you know, reviews are a rich uh, uh, source for conducting research because why? Because they save us lots of time. Uh, it does not matter where you're located. A review can uh, save you lots of time because someone else has examined uh, a publication, examined uh, uh, an article, let's say. They reviewed it for you. If it's a new book, someone else has looked at it, uh, assessed it, and wrote a critical essay about it. So, uh, so incorporating institutions, reviews, podcasts, uh, will really help uh, lead you to other sources. And I should really bring in social media uh, because social media, there are a lot of good and some unusual conversations are happening on social media, but you know they are starting to uh, um, be uh, places where sources are shared, whether a new publication uh, that maybe if uh, one of your professors has published, uh, you know, by using social media, especially specific academic uh, social media outlets, you really get to engage with uh, uh, not only other scholars, but also some of the, the materials that, are, that they're sharing. So uh, my suggestion is to expand, expand your scope of sources, not just connected to libraries, but outside the libraries as well. And, and, and social media uh, outlets are becoming very important, especially if we are building on sources. Now we come to what we consider, uh, I, I'm using the word perennial, uh, and, 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 and these sources are what you would call foundational sources. Uh, and this is where you know, libraries play an important role. Uh, and I'm talking about, of course, uh, uh, encyclopedias. I'm talking about bibliographies. I'm also talking about uh, subject librarians, uh, you know, throughout the world, in all different types of academic libraries, there are subject librarians and, and, or reference librarians that you could consult with. I am a reference librarian. And, and so, so you have a variety of sources in libraries that you could consult. My favorite source to go to are, of course, bibliographies. And I will talk more about that in, in, in the next slide. But these are the foundational sources uh, that you could really use. Why do we use uh, why do we use encyclopedias? Why do we use bibliographies? Because again, it saves you time. They give you a quick overview on any topic, any topic. Encyclopedias uh, in different languages on different subjects give you a very nice overview on let's say I'm, I'm I'm thinking about let's say if you're if you're interested in in a topic I'm, I'm let's say uh, wine making for example production let's say encyclopedias give you a very good idea of the history of wine making around the world so you use that information uh, uh, to to again build to interact with other sources uh, bibliographies. Uh, we will look at one in particularly, for example, one of my favorite bibliographies uh, published in Turkey is a bibliography uh, on women. Uh, and uh, another bibliography that I regularly use, which is bibliography of periodicals uh, of women uh, uh, published in, in Turkey. Uh, and why is that important? Because in one source, it tells you uh, a lot of different uh, uh, case studies and, and publications on a specific subject matter. Uh, and that gives me uh, so much more than, than browsing, let's say. So uh, it, it's a time-saving uh, source and I hope you will consult more bibliographies. 
And, you know, citations, citation indexes, citations are an excellent way uh, to build uh, uh, towards, uh, 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 you, to build on your project. And it doesn't have to be very complex. A lot of us, uh, you know, when, we, when we're reading a book uh, or when we're looking at a journal article, we, we really sometimes uh, uh, um, move towards uh, footnotes and notes and the works cited to, to expand on the sec secondary uh, sources that we have to work with. And so this is a good way uh, uh, to, to uh, explore a subject matter. And there are excellent sources uh, of information. And of course, citation indexes are uh, now especially uh, are extremely convenient. Uh, you could really use them to figure out a couple of things. One, um, you know, what works are being cited on a specific subject matter? Like, you know, uh, who is being cited? Which authors are being cited? So you really could build an, like a really nice network uh, of, of uh, works being cited. Uh, and that's always very helpful. Um, and this is not uh, uh, restricted to specific disciplines. It's, it's, it's multidisciplinary in scope, every discipline, uh, has its own, uh, let's say, citation index tool. Um, and what I want to stress is one of the things like, is this only English language scholarship? No, it is international in scope. Uh, and I do have to admit some databases are overwhelmingly English language based, but most of them have an international scope. For example, uh, there, there may be some scientists in the room, let's say, uh, uh, there may be chemists in the room. Uh, so we have SciFinder, for example, that is an international uh, uh, research database for specifically uh, focusing on all aspects of uh, uh, chemistry, physical sciences. Uh, you have Scopus, uh, that's another multidisciplinary database. Uh, and so you do have uh, uh, sources for exploring uh, specific subject matter in the form of citation indexes. I strongly recommend starting with citation indexes because they're invaluable uh, 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 for any research project and including for librarians as well because you get to verify information. Okay. And, and one of the things that, that that's really helpful is, uh, you know, Obviously, uh, these databases that I just highlighted uh, are paid databases. Uh, and, and sometimes you may not have access to them, uh, but, but, but there are tools that could be really helpful uh, to uh, explore, explore scholarly content. All right, I mentioned uh, Scopus. I'm, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this. Um, the reason I, I'm, I'm bringing up Scopus is the multidisciplinary uh, uh, aspect of Scopus. Uh, usually, uh, in, uh, you know, most of us anyway, when we think of Scopus, we only think of life and physical sciences, but it's much more than that. Uh, it, it is a good database also for the, the social sciences, but also uh, a little bit uh, 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 cross-disciplined with, let's say, environmental sciences, uh, psychology even. So uh, I strongly hope that you will explore multidisciplinary databases, databases if you're interested in a project that overlaps with another discipline. Okay, uh, this, is, this is truly my passion. So I just mentioned uh, a lot of, um, databases that are paid subscription databases, but I want to really stress on something that is, that is universal, which is national bibliographies. For example, uh, this database uh, is uh, uh, maintained and uh, published by the National Library of Turkey. Uh, and why this is important is it, it really gives you an idea of uh, what has been published in a specific country. So what am I talking about? I am talking about national bibliographies. What are national bibliographies? Um, imagine if you're driving uh, on a road 
and you see on the side of the road someone holding a very huge sign and they say would you like to know what has been published in a country and if you say yes well that's national bibliography they give you an idea uh, of what books have been published what articles what journals what newspapers so if 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 we if we let go of everything today, if we forget about everything today, please remember that national bibliographies are your best friends. Uh, they, they, they never fail you. And so I hope you incorporate national bibliographies as your source. It doesn't matter which subject you're researching, national bibliographies will help you, give you an idea of what's being published in a specific country. And here, of course, we're dealing with article, uh, uh, articles uh, from Turkish journals. Uh, and then you, let's say, whether you're a chemist or a historian or a biologist, uh, the great thing about being in a discipline is that all the disciplines are self-organizing, right? You know, uh, if you go to your faculty member, they'll tell you, uh, well, top five journals for uh, studying, uh, let's say, I don't know, uh, let's say uh, history, let's say, I'm, I keep bringing up history. Uh, they'll give you the list of journals, they'll mention it. Uh, and, and so the good thing about disciplines is that you know, uh, let's say specific journals that are important for a specific field. Uh, and that way you could really go directly to those journals to see what is being published. Uh, and and you know, we, we may think that disciplines are not organized really well, but guess what? Information in specific disciplines are really uh, pulled together because they hold an entire discipline together. So my suggestion is if you do not want to, uh, uh, let's say, go through all the hard work, let's say, and you're curious, go through journals that are attached to specific disciplines. And that way you will see what scholars are uh, publishing. And so uh, that, that's a that's a different alternative route to, to uh, uh, compiling sources for your project. Okay, uh, the other uh, type of sources that I really wanna stress here is conferences. Uh, most people do not uh, uh, bring conferences as a potential source, but I hope you will consider. There are conversations happening all the time around the world at major conferences or even small conferences. Why are conferences so important? Well, th they're continuously happening. They're happening, let's say, uh, every year. Sometimes they happen every month. So you can really get fresh perspectives, fresh ideas, and even uh, uh, drafts of articles if you consult uh, uh, conferences. Now, how do you consult what happened at a conference? Well, you do it through conference proceedings. And, and so here are some examples of conferences that have taken place. Um, and they're very specific, very unique. So you can really um, uh, use conferences, incorporate them into your research projects because they make, it, uh, they make them rich uh, in perspective. Uh, you know. So, so uh, never discount conferences. Okay, a uh, little bit more, uh, expanded more on this, uh, which is um, associations. Um, you know, I, one of the things that everyone benefits, especially if, you, if, if you're in an academic field, are associations. Now, sometimes associations of, for let's say geologists or mechanical engineers, they provide a wealth of information on their websites, including they also publish their own journals maybe, their own sources. So always check with associations uh, to see what type of information th that they're hosting on their websites. Let's go here. Okay, and, and another potential, uh, a little bit unorthodox are listservs. Uh, now I know everybody is terrified of listservs because your inboxes always gets full but listservs can be very helpful in the sense, uh, just like social media, they help uh, you connect with other scholars. They help you connect with uh, networks of other scholars, 
but also information. Uh, sources are shared. So please, please, if you're uh, uh, working on a project and you've come to a full stop and you don't not, do not know where to go, listservs can really help. You know, it's, it's a great informal way of communicating. I think everybody knows this, but when it comes to, uh, 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 you know, being part of a community, community support for a specific project, listservs are an excellent source and I hope you will consider them. Okay, now I, I've, I've talked about sources, uh, the traditional and non-traditional sources, but let's talk about search tools. And I hope you're commenting on the Jamboard uh, about some of the search tools that you use. So when it comes to search tools, it, it's we're talking about uh, uh, numerous possibilities here, numerous. You have, I'm using the word traditional catalogs. Well, I am, I am uh, old enough to remember print catalogs, but now when I am using traditional catalogs, I am referring to online catalogs. Well, Online catalogs, uh, there's diversity there as well, because you are very familiar with your university library catalog. But there, there are, within that, you also have union catalogs. For example, there could be a union catalog of Turkish libraries. There's also public libraries, academic, special, national library catalogs. So why am I bringing up these search tools? My one suggestion to all of the students in the room is go beyond your institution. Go as far as you want to. Make it an adventure. If you feel like your university library catalog uh, uh, does not have the materials for your research project, go beyond. Go as far as you want to. Because guess what? There are hundreds of catalogs at other institutions that you could search and figure out what they have. And then guess what? Your interlibrary loan department can help you get materials from other libraries. And I also wanna talk about something uh, uh, wonderful that is happening, which is catalogs are changing. They're constantly changing and they're making it convenient. For example, some catalogs tell you, oh, I have this book. Uh, here is how you get this book, let's say. Other catalogs are telling you, here is an article that was published, but I have the journal. So they're telling you different pieces of information. And then you have a, a full integration I'm using because they want to make it convenient for you. So for example, you may search a catalog that is acting as uh, both a catalog that tells you physical things in a library, but it also tells you uh, what articles are being published, right? Uh, and then it also includes ways for you to access that information in the form of a duplication request, or you can request items. So you're, you're really, you're looking at full integration. But most of us, most of us are familiar with, of course, uh, the dominant search tool these days are web browsers, right? So we have general web browsers, then we have web browsers our schools are collaborating with. So you may be searching on google.ru or yandex.ru or just general google.com uh, or you know uh, the, the, the version of Google in your country, the Google searches, right? Uh, and what will happen is if you search, you may see a, a link to a, a reference to an article there may be a full text capability to that article directly connected to your home library. So, so there's integration happening all over. And, 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 and web browsers also bring you in contact with, I think everybody knows, is content that is available uh, around the world, right? Uh, but academic content, specifically academic content, they bring you closer sometimes even faster than uh, traditional catalogs or databases that you may be familiar with. When we're really looking at search tools, what do we want? We want convenience. Above all, we want convenience and we want our uh, net to be wide. 
so that we know for sure when we search a catalog that we're getting all of the information as much as possible. So for example, one of the things that I really like are regional network uh, uh, catalogs. So, so regional catalogs. So for example, here is an example. This is the COBIS regional network. It connects most of the libraries, uh, most of the countries, I should say, uh, in the Balkan region. And look at the number of libraries participating in this network. So we have 1,000, 429 libraries participating in this network. So that means you could search that many libraries in this network. So that's an excellent thing. And that's one of the reasons why COBIS is so popular with scholars, students, and librarians, because you get to find out not only articles that have been published, but books, dissertations, thesis, conference proceedings, and uh, of course, special collections. So, um, so whenever possible, go beyond your university library catalog, go to the national library catalog, or go to a cat network that is like COBIS. And networks like this exist in other countries, in other regions, and so it is something to think about. Then I would like to point out, there are search tools that are very specialized. We are looking at the German Union Catalog of Serials. Now, let me, let me simplify this language uh, and, and, and specifically uh, reword it to say, let's say German Union Catalog of Journals. Let's say if you're specifically uh, uh, looking for journals, at German libraries, you can use this search tool. It tells you what journals German libraries have uh, on any subject. So I, I am showing a very specific journal that institutions in Germany have. And this is the Journal of Turkic and uh, uh, Ottoman Studies. And notice where it's published, it's published in Erevan, uh, and it started, looks like, in 2002. So if you're really curious about the different types of journals in a, in a country, our German colleagues have put this search tool together. Why is this important? Well, again, I go back. If your home library does not have what you need, it's time to explore elsewhere. And using a specialized search tool like this tool, uh, you can really expand your uh, research scope. And I strongly recommend uh, using specialized search tools like the German Union Catalog of Serials uh, to, to really uh, figure out uh, what is out there because it's an adventure. It really is an adventure. Uh, and another thing that this is really good is for ILL librarians because um, it makes it so much easier to locate journals uh, and other types of serials uh, around the world. Okay, now let's look at the Jamboard to see what comments you have posted so far. Uh, let's see this here. I'm going to look at, let's look at this together. How about that? I'm gonna share the screen here. All right, so look at this, a really good variety. Ah, look what we have here, YouTube, wonderful. I'm so glad uh, someone put that there because YouTube continuously is discounted as, as a potential source. Uh, and I'm so glad to see YouTube, brilliant. Uh, someone put publishers web pages, brilliant. Um, let's see, uh, research guides. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and so look at our group. Here are some of the things we are, um, we are consulting. Um, and of course, things are constantly changing. And I wanna add something, uh, which is now we need to add another potential source, which is 
machine learning uh, 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 strategies for uh, locating vast quantities of information, vast quantities of information. Um, and, 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 and so the, tr the tools, the search tools that I've just highlighted are in some ways already becoming uh, somewhat obsolete in the sense. So now the, the, the need among scholars, librarians and scientists is not just database there or a catalog here, no, searching vast quantities of information. So data sets. Uh, and, and so, so that's emerging as an important need uh, among uh, uh, in, in, not only in academic libraries, but, but also among scholars. Um, and so who knows, we may, we may be able to get to that stage where we could search comprehensively, um, uh, you know, uh, in, in, including, let's say, uh, it doesn't matter the period, we could search comprehensively. Uh, and that seems to be the direction we're heading. And, and I just hope that we will not forget uh, something that's very important, which is I have just talked about overwhelmingly online possibilities for your research. Please know that the reason why we have online versions of search tools is because there are print versions of those search tools. Always remember that because uh, if there is a continuity, as a scholar, you have to realize that fact, which is there's a continuity uh, between print and online. So if you're wondering, oh, you know, uh, I, I just used a library database. Was there a print uh, a source linked to that type of a, a resource? Most likely, yes. Uh, and, and so you can work with your librarians to figure out the print options for specific online resource. So I hope you will, uh, I hope you will not discriminate against information formats. That's what I wanted to say. Uh, and lastly, uh, I wanna point out uh, also that a source or a set of sources that are largely not visible, which is uh, microfiche, microfilm, and microcards. I do not know if you've ever used microfilm, microfiche, microcards, they also contain vast quantities of information, vast quantities. And so the reason why uh, scholars, librarians do not like to, let's say, f use them uh, is because, well, you have to put them in the reader, you have to roll them, and you have to look through them. But I assure you, things are convenient. You could convert microfilm, microfiche, uh, 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 let's say journals in microfiche, microfilm uh, into searchable PDFs in no time. So I, I guess in, in, in conclusion, what I wanted to say is that uh, when you are looking for sources, um, you should not be uh, uh, looking for them uh, for a specific format. You're looking for sources because they contain information. And ladies and gentlemen, information comes in different formats and I hope you will incorporate the full extent of scholarly record, the full extent, no matter what it looks like or, or, or the shape of it. So thank you very much. I, I've, I've spoken uh, way more than I should, but I'm looking forward to uh, hearing your thoughts on this. Thank you. Thank you, Joe, uh, for your presentation. It was uh, interesting presentation for me also i really surprised that you have a great uh, knowledge and expertise about the turkish literature and the turkish search tools it, it, it's great <laughs> uh, for now i'm looking uh, on the chat box if there is any question to you also you can follow the question there are some thank messages uh, and I'm going to wait a few more minutes to get questions. Oh, 
<laughs> Thank you, Joe. <laughs> It can be a, a great opportunity for the uh, stud students uh, if you make your presentation in Turkish. Thank you very much, everybody. Okay, then uh, it seems there is no more, uh, there is no question to you, uh, Joe. Uh, mm -hmm. I would like to thank you one more time for your presentation and joining us today. It was a great uh, pleasure for all of us. Thank you. And thank you so much. We are, very welcome. Uh, yeah. we are having a short break uh, and we will be here again at three o'clock. See you at three o'clock. Bye.